Hi, I'm Liz Jensen. For over 20 years, I've been a nurse executive and educator, and I'm currently the clinical director at Direct Supply. Obtaining a bladder volume or a post-void residual using bladder ultrasound technology is a recommended best practice and an important addition to your clinical continence program. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the Direct Supply Attendant Bladder Scanner. When you open the box, your attendant bladder scanner should include the scanner itself, a probe, a probe holster, two batteries, a battery charger, a roll of thermal paper, an owner's manual, and a quick start guide. If you are missing any of these items, call your account manager. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver for some basic assembly. If you've purchased the optional stand, first connect the metal base plate to the bladder scanner using the two Phillips head screws included in the stand kit. Assemble the stand by following the included instructions. Connect the probe holster to the right side of the scanner with the two included Phillips head screws. Place the probe in the holster Align the red dots on the plug and the probe socket to connect the probe to the scanner. Slide the bladder scanner onto the stand and lock in place. The attendant bladder scanner comes with two rechargeable batteries, so you can continue to use the device as one battery charges. Connect the battery pack to the charger and plug the charger into an AC outlet. When the charger indicator light is red, the battery is charging. When the light turns green, the battery is fully charged. The battery should then be disconnected from the charger and the charger unplugged. When a battery is fully charged, slide it into place in the back of the unit. To remove a battery for charging, pull the battery tab down while sliding the battery pack out. Note that the battery will not charge if plugged into the bladder scanner unit. Before you can perform a scan, you may need to check your settings. Turn the unit on and then press the setup key on the main screen. This will allow you to access the gain, time, facility, print, power, sound, and version submenus. To save changes to any of these submenus and exit to the main screen, press the OK button. The cancel button exits to the main screen without saving changes. The gain menu controls the system gain, the level of sensitivity the device uses to measure bladder volume. Most users will not need to adjust this setting. Refer to your owner's manual for more information. The time menu lets you adjust the date and time displayed on printouts and system records. The facility menu lets you add your facility's name to the printout record. The print menu lets you select what information to include in the record printout. The print submenu is separated into two zones. The upper zone selects or deselects the bladder projection image for printing. The lower zone allows you to select a cross-sectional image to add to the printout. Selected images are indicated by a green button. Select the power menu to set the screen off time and shutdown time. The screen off time sets the number of minutes the display will stay powered when the device is not in use. If the device is not operated within the time period set for screen off time, the display will shut down to conserve battery life. The shutdown time determines how long the device will stay powered when not in use. If the device is not operated within the designated shutdown time, it will turn off. The sound menu simply allows you to turn the unit's sound on and off. The version menu displays what software operates your bladder scanner. This is purely informational and cannot be adjusted. To load a new roll of paper, First, make sure the device is off. Press the Open button to the right of the printer door. The printer housing will pop open. Insert the paper, making sure it feeds from the bottom of the roll. Pull one inch of paper from the roll, threading it out of the housing and closing the cover. 
Be careful not to jam the paper when closing the door. Turn on the bladder scanner. Run a test scan. And press the print button to test that the paper was loaded correctly and the printer is working properly. To prevent cross-contamination, the bladder scanner and probe should be wiped down with a pre-moistened alcohol wipe or a soft cloth dampened with isopropyl alcohol after every resident use. Allow the bladder scanner and probe to dry completely before scanning the next resident. Thanks for watching this Direct Supply Attendant Bladder Scanner video. For more information, please view our other videos or contact your Direct Supply Account Manager.